C is, put simply, a fudge factor. It is considered a universal constant, despite the fact that it is based on the ideal and exact speed a photon would travel in perfect vacuum, wherein it meets with zero resistance, although, necessarily, no such conditions can exist anywhere within our local universe populated everywhere as it is by the electromagnetic microwave background radiation, that all-encompassing field of seething EMFs comprised of a vast ocean of electrons and positrons all colliding, canceling each other out, and propagating as photon waves, etc. So, if there is no pure vacuum, condition anywhere in our local space-time, then C may seem an arbitrary choice for a universal constant. However, it is not, and remains such, because it is measuring the average velocity of photons in the local universe, regardless of the lack of a perfectly hermetic void. The definition of C is as one Planck distance being traveled by a photon per one Planck time. One Planck distance per one Planck time amounts to C in the same sense as 60 miles equates to 60 minutes when one is going 60 miles per hour. So, rather than being the universal speed at which all photons necessarily travel through the space-time continuum of our local universe, C is merely like the posted legal speed limit, the fastest one may drive by law, while the reality is a VSL, variable speed of light, with each photon moving at its own rate relative to every other. It has been further observed in the early 21st century that massive enough impacts, such as colliding black holes, produce gravity waves, which can move one and a half times FTL, faster than light, or rather at 1.5 times C. At one point, I myself mused that, quote, Perhaps tachyons are the force-carrying particle of gravity, end quote, itself. However, this remains to be demonstrated sufficiently to be considered proven as a universal, let alone multiversal, axiomatic truism. Suffice it to say that no less than half of photons, and probably the vast majority, are traveling at speeds slower than C, while inside our local cosmos, simply because they meet with the resistance of free radical electrons in deep space and form scalar waves with other photons as well. This truism is so axiomatic it may be considered universal. C may be a definitive measure for the fastest speed any quantum can travel and still be considered inside our local universe. In short, what is slower than and below C is our local universe, and what is faster than and above C is a form of hyperspace, notably with zero or even negative propagation resistance surrounding the outside of our local universe in a halo of tachyons, FTL quanta. Of course, Einstein proved much of this on paper, where he demonstrated mathematically that E equals mc squared, meaning that matter, traveling at the speed of light squared, becomes energy. This elegant equation describes the local space-time continuum as matter and the surrounding glow of hyperspace 
surrounding it as energy, where wavelength multiplied by frequency, Greek lambda times lowercase f, yields c, or the velocity at which matter begins to break down into energy. More recent calculations amend this simplified observation dimensionally, describing the local cosmos as three-dimensional space and hyperspace as four-dimensional space, where C measures the difference between these as a relative constant, fixed rate of entropy, particle decay by emission of free radical heat energy. Thus, C may be thought of as not only the speed limit of light, but also as the time barrier. Technically, however, a more accurate measure for the time barrier velocity would be the Hubble constant. Working some years after Einstein, Edwin Hubble observed that, subtracting effects from the parallax-like gravitational lensing proposed by Einstein, all the visible galaxies, aside from the nearest to our own, Andromeda, exhibit a red shift in the speed of light emitted from them that reaches us here on Earth. This, he concluded, must be due to the Doppler effect, red light having a longer wavelength than blue light. Blue light being shorter waves would mean the objects were approaching, but red light being longer means the objects are moving further away. As the objects, all other galaxies, exhibit this red shift to the speed of light, Hubble concluded there must be a universal constant underlying this distortion to C. This universal constant rate shift to C, the absolute speed of light, has since come to be named for him the Hubble constant. However, the Hubble constant is not universally constant, no more so than the speed limit of C is obeyed universally by all photons alike all of the time. Not only does the Hubble constant apparently change for the entire cosmic horizon over time, as more recent observations indicate an increased rate of speed than Hubble had initially predicted, possibly indicating that the Hubble constant is speeding up. But the Hubble constant may be slightly different even between the different galaxies, given their differing distances from Earth. That is to say, further away galaxies may appear to be retreating away from Earth and our galaxy, the Milky Way, at an even greater rate than those closer to home. This increased rate of universal expansion, defined by the variable Hubble constant, extrapolated from the intergalactic red shift, started modern astrophysicists on a quest for dark matter that would account for causing the cosmic expansion to be speeding up faster than the observable mass would seem to indicate it should be moving. Having, still today, found no dark matter of any significant sort, the shift has begun within the scientific community toward attributing the increase in the universal expansion rate to dark energy forces, or rather to electromagnetic bolts in ionized plasma surrounding a microgravitational supersymmetric string that invisibly connects all galaxies along the thus far only CGI modeled intergalactic filaments. Ultimately the conclusion cannot be denied that the Hubble constant appears to be increasing partially due to the space between galaxies increasing, but also partially due to the space inside galaxies decreasing.
These combined factors may account for the above average rate of intergalactic distancing. There likely was a time when C was constant throughout the cosmos, when there was no FTL hyperspace yet, and when the Hubble constant may also have been a universal generalizability. This period of time would have simply occurred prior to the cosmos reaching a point of critical mass, after which black holes formed and upset the universal ubiquity of the space-time continuum's expansion rate. If one calculates the equations for Einstein's space-time, but subtracts the presence of such gravitational singularities as black holes, one will arrive at a cosmos in which the Hubble constant is likely also a fixed rate. However, once black holes form in the cosmos and are introduced to the space-time continuum, they begin to cause imbalanced distortion to the fabric of that continuum on a quantum level. It has been predicted, and now also observed, that black holes do indeed form from the deaths of the oldest stars, and that most, if not all, spiral galaxies accumulate as star clusters in a flat accretion disk draining inward towards such a black hole at their core. Thus, we do live in a cosmos with black holes in it, and thus our cosmos has passed its point of universal critical mass, prior to which point the speed of all photons was precisely c, and the rate of ubiquitous universal expansion was exactly the Hubble constant. So, the potential for gravitational lensing caused by differing physics in the intergalactic voids, notwithstanding. We may posit that galaxies are growing apart from one another independently, and growing smaller inside themselves as well, at the same time. These combinations forming distortions to the light they emit, caused by their growing further apart on the one hand, and internally shrinking in size on the other, amount to the variable Hubble constant and to a form of gravitational lensing, distorting the rate of C, or the speed traveled by photons, rendering its wavelengths shorter and faster inside galaxies, and longer and slower in the deep space in between them. Thus, the distortion to the VSL of C inside a galaxy, plus the distortion to the space-time between that galaxy and an observer, in this case, us on Earth, equals the accurate Hubble constant rate for C. However, if not dark matter or dark energy, and even if by gravity wave pulses between the white hole poles of the black holes at spiral galactic cores, then what is the cause for the Hubble constant expansion rate, variable or fixed? Why does the universe appear to be expanding, even if only in the spaces between galaxies, at all? let alone apparently speeding up in doing so. Aside from uncounted interior mass, some modern string theorist astrophysicists have posited that hyperspace, or some form of dark energy force, FTL, is exerting a gravitational, or at least gravity-like, pull on our cosmos from outside and beyond it insofar as hyperspace is comprised of FTL energy deposited outside of the local universe through black holes and produced from the amount of space-time 
matter energy these black holes have consumed so far. Hyperspatial zero-point energy may provide, as mentioned, a zero resistance or even an attractive pull, negative resistance or active capacitance, for the universe to expand into. However, this effect would, again, be unevenly distributed throughout the cosmos and may form pockets of different types of physics in different parts of the cosmos at different times. What does it mean for the universe to be expanding? Does this mean that distance is increasing ubiquitously? If so, how would we know it? After all, you cannot measure a change in distance if the instrument you use to measure it is also changed by the same amount. But is the expansion of distance the same on the cosmic and the quantum scales? If we may use C as, however arbitrary, a fixed rate for measuring the maximum velocity of space-time, then is this emanating at the same rate as the cosmic Hubble constant, measuring the vast continuum's expansion? In other words, is C expanding along with Hubble? Or are these entirely independent variables? If the space inside atoms, measuring the distance between any atomic nucleus and its orbital shells in a probability cloud of electrons, is itself expanding, and this is what is the real root cause for what we perceive as the Hubble expansion rate for the entire cosmos, variable or fixed, then C may be expected to undergo observable gravitational warping to its velocity as a result of this over time. In short, if Hubble speeds up, C should be seen to accelerate commensurately along with it. However, we should compare this to observations both from nature and in the laboratory, to see if this prediction still seems to hold true. It is known, through parallax, that gravitational lensing distorts the trajectory of a photon ray into a warped bend around large objects in outer space. Far from traveling this warped trajectory at a fixed rate, C. A photon will speed up and slow down along this warping to its forward momentum, determined by its location relative to the larger mass object. According to Kepler's law of motion, in particular that of the conservation of angular momentum, which indicates that a smaller body revolving around a larger body in an ellipse will travel its orbit at an irregular rate determined by the twin focal points for that ellipse. Thus, like the Earth's varying lengths of seasons as it orbits the Sun, a photon passing around an object in outer space will vary its velocity as it goes around it. The result of this rather needlessly complex proof for VSL is that photons may travel at one rate inside of a galaxy and another rate entirely in the deep space voids in the space in between galaxies. Again, the Hubble constant is merely the combination of these two aspects of C when they are both observed together as seen from their distance to Earth. So, if the Hubble constant is increasing, does that mean that C must also be universally increasing as well? No, in fact, 
light speed may be speeding up inside of galaxies and slowing down considerably as it leaves these and enters the deep space of the intergalactic voids. This vast variability in the speed of light alone may account for the apparent discrepancy of the Hubble constant observed from that predicted. However, more than merely proving C is variable, this premise has a vast and immediate impact on all our lives right now. If C is the rate at which we measure entropy, or loss of mass to energy exchange, and C is variable, then the rate at which we measure entropy, which we use to mark the passage of time, is also subject to change. This means the rate at which we experience time itself can change. Obviously, time flies when you're having fun, and likewise, seems to drag when one is bored. But this is solely due to our perception of the fixed rate of time which, it has always been thought, occurs at a steady tempo throughout the entire universe, from the Big Bang unto the foreseeable future and, presumably, even beyond. So, though our perception of it may be subjective, the objective existence of time as a thing in itself has long been assumed, given its presumptively regular, steady, universally ubiquitous, fixed, constant rate. Without questioning the objective existence of time as such, it is possible to substitute VSL for C, and thus allow for a variable speed of time. VST, or a variable time barrier. If the time barrier is variable, it may also be permeable. If the realm of ZPE, zero point energy, in hyperspace between C and C squared truly is a fourth spatial dimension, then increasing the rate of universal expansion would increase the rate not only of the passage of time, but also of the swelling in sizes inside of and between atoms as much as galaxies. As our own three-dimensional matter-energy continuum is pulled into this 4D ZPE of hyperspace, its effect on us is the inflation of space-time, or apparent universal expansion. Thus, as space-time shrinks within galaxies, hyperspace expands, or swells, and as space-time expands between galaxies, hyperspace shrinks or thins out relative to it. Beginning with the alignment of the Sun and galactic core on December 21, 2012, Earth has entered a vast plasma sheet emitted from the black hole at galactic core. This relatively invisible stream of highly charged ionized particulates, a plasma gas, travels at near light speed and thus operates at a nearly straight line of emanation outward from galactic core toward Earth, as opposed to the spiraling of the nebulae, gas clouds and star systems pulled into the arms of the galaxy that places Earth in the fourth such arm out from galactic center. As such, this plasma sheet coming from galactic core oscillates between peaks concurrent to the arms of the galaxy, 
and troughs between these arms and expresses a slower curvature of spiraling than the arms as well. As our solar system enters this plasma sheet, we will be exposed to increased exotic particles and cosmic rays at a period in time when the sunspot cycle has just peaked and is beginning to enter a 1,000 year long decline. Thus, the sunspot cycle will not be able to build up Earth's ionosphere to protect us from these interstellar influences and, coincidentally, Earth will be entering a colder period or many ice age as well. Not only this, but this plasma sheet may carry with it comets or animate asteroids to descend sunward from the Oort cloud. The effect of this on Earth is that of passing through a cosmic shooting gallery. But what does this plasma sheet have to do with universal expansion? Both relate to how we perceive time, and both seem to be tending towards speeding up our perception thereof, even during our own present lifetimes. Since this experience of time speeding up is also often associable with the feeling of time running out, then one may begin to wonder to what event is our local clock counting down. 